we'll slowly get started here. We'll go ahead and get started and hopefully everybody else who's planning on joining us will trickle in. Uh, so good morning. <clears throat> I'm already sharing my screen out here. So if you want to focus on me or if you don't want to look at me, you just want to look at the shared content, that's either one's totally fine, whatever works for you. Uh, my name is Andrew Stibberts. I'm an instructor here with Sunset Learning Institute. Uh, and I'm going to walk you through today's tech talk, which it's not too long. Uh, definitely be, we'll, we'll be here for less than an hour, uh, where we wanted to talk about ACE, the ACE, the Arista Cloud Engineer track and the training and the certification that goes on there and what's happening. So for myself, again, I'm, a, I'm an instructor here with Sunset. I'm certified on both Cisco, Arista, AWS, bunch of different stuff. And so uh, I'll give you a little bit of my perspective on the different training that occurs as well as the actual certification process. So <clears throat> for our agenda for today, pretty straightforward. We're going to talk about just overall, what is Arista, uh, that company, where, where did they fall within the world of networking? How do we think about them? Uh, we'll talk about what ACE is specifically. And then we're going to separate it up to the training versus the actual evaluation and the test format. And I want to specify this. I want to stress this just a little bit. Um, I, I don't want to use the word exam too much. I really want to say evaluation. I want to say testing um, because it's all practical. Just iron that in the way to think about uh, testing for Arista, they are practical hands-on exams. No multiple choice questions. It's all actual labs, live environments. And we're gonna talk about how that works, but it's, it's a different, different way to approach the training, to, to approach the testing for all the levels. Uh, so we'll talk about the scheduling there. We'll talk about the actual test format. We'll have open Q&A at the end there. So Arista. <clears throat> Founded back in 2004, uh, one of the things you hear about them, either in the classroom or actually on site, is they are the second company in the data center. What, what does that mean? So when a data center deployment occurs, commonly uh, folks will start with a different vendor. Uh, you know, there's a couple other options out there, big names in the world of data center operations, and they might go with them just because of how large the company is or because of service contract levels, whatever. Uh, what frequently happens is that as their needs change or as the deployment is fully developed, they find that the initial vendor doesn't actually work for them, where either it, the, the deployment worked initially, but it wasn't able to grow, uh, it wasn't able to change over time as they needed, or the as they needed to deploy new devices, new hardware, new software, various options, the initial vendor was a, unable to support that new need, um, or just didn't scale to it. So one of the things that Arista focuses on is they use standards, standard-based networking there. So you've probably heard IEEE, probably heard of 802 protocols, um, kind of some those words we throw around. That's really what they use. They use standards-based networking. Other vendors, there's a trend where they'll use vendor-specific or vendor-proprietary protocols like We'll just throw out, for example, Cisco. Cisco has uh, a large history of developing their own protocol, which doesn't always work when you talk, try to talk to some other vendors' hardware. So with Arista, it's standards-based networking. So if you want to use their equipment to talk to other vendors' equipment or uh, maybe not have them be the primary focus in the future or just for whatever reason, it's all standard. They can all talk to every other device. So the primary focus, um, they don't have hardware. I mean, theoretically, anything's possible. I, I say that in the world of networking, we can make anything work. 
and that's what gets gets us in trouble because we can make anything work. But the the primary focus with Arista networking, their their hardware is designed for it works well in data center environments where the latency, the speed, that's for what's required. And also, I did mention in there the cloud. Yes, we do have integration with the cloud. We have the virtual EOS devices, and so it's, it does integrate with the cloud as well. Uh, they use what's called the EOS operating system, the extensible operating system, uh, primarily switches. And so depending upon which vendor you're more familiar with, you might hear them called layer three switches, layer seven switches. It's routing and switching switches that have higher levels of awareness, what we use, uh, what every vendor uses. And also now they're also have Wi-Fi. And so you can look at integrating their Wi-Fi solution into the overall switching solution. Uh, some of the numbers that get thrown around there are sort of some of their high speed models, uh, some of the latest models, about 400 gig per second, 400 gig ethernet connections with 3.5 microsecond USEC, 3.5 microsecond latency on their connections, which is awesome when we start looking at data center requirements. So that's what Arista is. They're, they're a company doing primarily data center networking, hardware and software. So what is ACE? ACE is the Arista Cloud Engineer Training. And so there's a couple of different websites and we'll, we'll put the URLs for these websites under the, I can put them in the meeting chat as well. And wherever we're gonna post this video, we can post those URLs. And so let's take a quick look We've got the two sides here. We have the training and then the testing side. So we start, we're starting off <clears throat> with our, the Arista website. So if we pivot over here, I already got Arista pulled up. And so we'll go to our Arista website here, just arista.com and a couple things here. First off from an engineer perspective, just right up front, you can start looking at the different product lines, but also under the support, I'm really happy about this is you have the, it's got the product documentation just right there, easily accessible. Um, the EOS config guides, their cloud guides, other vendors, you're frequently better off just Googling, trying to find documentation with Arista. It's very easy, very straightforward to find everything you need just right there on their site. But anyway, you're here for training. So under Arista, we're gonna to go to our training section here. So we're here they're gonna talk about, you know, what is ACE? So the overall ACE program is a series of levels. We have levels one through seven. And <clears throat> there's different colors, because there are different, there's three kind of different areas that it gets broken up into, actually four kind of different areas that gets broken up into. Um, but you can easily think of these as, increasing levels where everybody starts at layer one, then you might go to layer two, then you might go to level three and so on. If you are starting from the beginning and you just wanted to work your way up. Um, but if you already, or you a customer, uh, whoever already has years of experience, you can just jump in at whatever level you're already at. You don't have to start at level one. So they give you a little breakdown here. <laughs> Again, we'll put this URL in the, the meeting chat and wherever we post this video. Uh, they'll give, give you a breakdown here of first off the different job roles. So levels one through seven, if you were level three certified, uh, where, where, where would you be lo looking? Well, level two, level three, these, these kind of have a, some overlap there. You're looking at day-to-day <clears throat> -day operations, not quite entry level, more, a little more sophistication, a little more hands-on. Um, they give you some expected years, how many years of experience in that field do you estimate? It's not a hard line, it's not a threshold, but if you have you know, around three to five years, around five years, that's probably what you, what, what you would have if you were level three or level four certified. They also give you a handy comparison. They say the competitive cert level what if you were going to compare this certification to some other vendor, what might it be? So like level one, they say you might compare that to the data center and the service provider and the route switch. So all, all of those for the associate level certification from some other vendor. 
And level two would be data center, service right, route switch uh, at the professional level and so on. Um, they give you a breakdown uh, to get the certification, what's required. Well, for levels one through five, there's five day courses. So that's training we're gonna talk about. And then there's exams. Level six and seven, it's just the exam. We're gonna take a look at that. Uh, and slight typo here, the, the, this is actually just, just recently got updated. All of these are practical lab exams. It says here that level one is a multiple choice exam. It's not everything is a practical lab exam, just all ACE one through seven, they're all practical lab, lab exams. Okay, just keep it, keep, keep it simple, it's very straightforward. So <clears throat> well, how do, I mentioned the colors, one through three, kind of four, five, six, and seven, now there's a couple different types there. Levels one through three primarily are for data center work. Levels one, two, and three, it's increasing levels of We'll say difficulty, in increasing levels of sophistication and options. It's more advanced work as you go from one to two to three, but those are primarily the data center function. Level four, that course, that, tr that course, it's exam, it also starts looking a lot at MPLS, multi-protocol label switching. So either MPLS in the data center, MPLS out to the WAN, out to the service providers, start tying that in. Level five, Notice here the, uh, <clears throat> what they call it, the competitive cert level comparison, expert plus Python and Ansible automation, programming. That's what's coming in here at level five. There are There is some scripting, there is some awareness of that. We do use that in some of the other courses, but level five, that's the focus where if you are an automation expert, if you are using automation day to day, that would be the course there. And when you start looking at six and seven, so there's no training, it's just exams. These are for architects, okay, Arch engineer and architect leads. So really the design aspect from, you know, from the beginning, uh, the planning side, that's where the level six and seven exams come into play. So <clears throat> you can just jump in straight to levels one through six. That's the only restriction they've got here to do the level seven you must be a current level six. So that's the ACE levels. Okay, so eight, uh, where's the cloud engineer? Levels one through seven. We just get a little refresher, a little, little rehash. One through three, data center focus. Level four, we start adding in MPLS. Level five is programmability. Six and seven is more the high level architect, the design side of things. Good so far. So those are the courses, those are the levels. Where do you take the training? Now you say, well, wait a minute, I came here to learn about certification. Why do I care about the training? Great question. They are practical lab exams. So if you self-study, you could pass the exam. It's not impossible, uh, but there is a very strong correlation between the skills that we practice in the course and what you are expected to do on the exam. So it's really recommended to take the training. Let's take a look. First site for training, we're gonna look at uh, uh, SDN pros. So Arista overall uses learning partners. And so SDN pros is their uh, pr primary learning partner here where we'll go to them for training as well as certification. And so we'll go to SDN pros. Again, we'll put the URL in the meeting chat and the public posting, and we'll hit this nice little training button. And under ACE training, we see a breakdown here of level one, level two, three, three, four, five, no six and seven, because those are just exams, no training for that. And we can click on one of these, sure, let's say level one, if I wanted to take this course, we'll click that big green arrow, big yellow arrow, and we'll see who it's for, experience level, and Check this out, lab time, three weeks of access. Actually, if I go back a page here, we can see three weeks of access, three weeks of access, three weeks of access. It's not five days of lab access. It's not five 10 hour days of lab access. It's three weeks of access because based the, the skills Arista wants you to have 
coming out of the exam is what we teach in that course. So we'll click on this and we can see which areas it covers. Uh, so if there's a particular technology, particular protocol you're interested in, we can look at the different sections and see like, oh yeah, fundamentals, hosts and point clients, or layer three operations, terminology, URF VPN, see what's in that course. <clears throat> uh, for self-study, I see that question about the self-study. Uh, let's take, actually, great question. Let's take a look at, we'll go back to level two. Because uh, there's a couple options there. If we keep scrolling down, so again, level two, get the different options. And then there's a couple modalities here. Well, you can just do the self-taught lab and book. And so we could click on that here and go in and start purchasing it, access to the lab, access to the digital book, just right there. So same page, you just keep scrolling down and there's your lab and book. There's also the Arista Academy Pro with some pre-recorded videos, the lab and the book. And if we keep scrolling down, then we get to the instructor-led training. So right there, so same page, just keep, keep scrolling down. There's your options for self-study versus instructor-led training. So we'll go to our global schedule here, for example, and you can filter it by course, partner, region. Uh, they've got different courses that run in the Middle East, Asia Pacific, North America. Uh, you can filter it by course level. <clears throat> and SDN Pros works with Sunset Learning where you can actually look at the courses that Sunset Learning is delivering as well as the courses that SDN Pros is delivering on this site. So we can say, show me all the Sunset Learning deliveries and then we'll get rid of the course filter, course level filter. And we can see that Sunset has a couple courses coming up as well. Awesome, cool. So um, the second site here, or third, I should say, we did the Arista, we did the SDN Pros, and then of course there's Sunset Learning. So we go to sunsetlearn.com, we'll say find a course. This, this website was also uh, recently updated. I mean, there's a laundry list of all the thousands of courses. So we're gonna filter that on the left-hand side here, we can filter it. And so we'll say, show me all the Arista training. Say, apply that filter. And there we go. We see, all right, which courses, what level, we can see the dates that they're running. Uh, I'll click on this ACE level one here. And we can see, you know, there's, I can get, download the course outline. I can see the timing for the different options there. Um, I can expand that to see you know, course outline information as well. So going back to our presentation here. So for the training, SDM Pros, Sunset Learning, you select, well, which, which level am I at? Well, based on experience, based on topics, am I starting from the beginning? You do a little self-assessment, where, where do I fall there? And then you find, well, which course running, you know, which time zone, which, uh, where works for me? So then, <clears throat> then we get to the exam. So now this is important, the core, you're gonna see this acronym come up a, couple, a lot with the Arista now, Cloud Operational Readiness Evaluation. It's not just an exam. And uh, I've gone through these and they are awesome. Where it's a, depending upon the course, two, four or five hour practical exam. It's a live lab environment <clears throat> running EOS. And it's, it's not a stripped down simulator. It's not partial code. It is, because remember EOS, we can run it in the cloud. It is a full function EOS, multiple EOS devices. You are given a series of tasks to perform and they say go. There's no one way to perform those tasks. You, that's the nature of the training is you can use command line to configure those tasks. You can use the graphical tools, the graphical management tools. If you're more of an automation, a scripting, uh, more of a DevOps person, you wanna use scripting to configure it, that's fine too. As long as you actually achieve the goals, there that you have done what the exam was looking for. There's no one way to do it. It's open book. Everyone just paid a start paying attention. It's open book. 
It's open internet. It, everything except for phone a friend. You cannot call anyone. It has to be just you. But wh what's going on here? Why is, why is the exam this way? Arista is, says when you walk into a, a customer environment, you have to be able to do the work that the certification says you know how to do. With multiple choice question exams, yeah, yes, it's you show that you have the knowledge or you know you were able to memorize parts of the book, but it doesn't show that you actually can do the work. So that's what the core does. With the core exam, the core style, it's a practical lab. You can Google search. I definitely Google searched a couple things in, in my exam. And just as long as you don't call anyone, you are showing that you can actually do the work. Um, so those exams are graded by Arista. You'll submit the exam at the end. Uh, you don't get your results for 24 or 48 hours actually graded by Arista. It's a pass fail. Did you achieve the goals or not? But here's a question. Has anyone ever here ever typed in an IP address incorrectly? Just me, right? No, nobody else ever does that. You ever do all the correct commands, do all the correct work, but you're working on the wrong device. It happens. If something like that occurs in your uh, evaluation, you can still pass. What they do is what's called a proctor review session. Remember, this is being graded by an Arista, uh, uh, by, by graded by hand. It's not just a script that runs through, you know, did you do X, Y, Z? No, because no, there's different ways to do the configuration in the first place. So it's being graded by hand. And if they see that all the work was there or you were missing that one command, you put, you know, the IP address just had the wrong decimal. Uh, something was just just off a little bit. What they're looking for there, it's then you'll see this on their site is that phrase complete completeness, not perfection. So they'll schedule a phone call and they'll have you walk through your config and why you were doing what you were doing, where, which device, and why you chose that device. And if you're showing that you knew what you were doing, you knew the commands, you knew the options. It's just there was a typo. That's not a reason to fail. It's, you know, that everyone has typos. So <clears throat> uh, if it's close, that, that might occur. But obviously, if you, if you don't do all the steps or, you know, everything's not done correctly, then it, you know, probably not going to pass. But if it's close like that, if it's just some, so a little misstep and everything else is looking good and it was, it's understandable how it was just a simple, you know, the wrong device, but the right command, that kind of, simple mix up that's where it can be a proctored pass on that exam <clears throat> excuse me uh so i saw a question there how do i schedule my exam that's a great question because we all want to schedule exams so what we'll do we'll go back to our sdn pro site so on sdn pros uh actually you'll we'll go over to the there's a couple ways to get to it but we'll say like we'll go to this what is core page and we see core and talks about exactly what I was just mentioning to you. Uh, open book, open internet, doing the assessment, and right here. So we go under sdnpros.com slash exams, say what is core, and we say register for the evaluation. So you'll plug in your name, plug in your email here. We'll do, I did a simple sample one this morning. We'll say, this is gonna be Bob, Bob at test, and then you select your exam level. So you see the levels one through seven. Uh, there's also a CVP course, the Cloud Vision Portal. Uh, CVP is uh, Arista's tool for managing their deployments. It's a pretty powerful tool. There's a full three-day course on that. Uh, but we'll say like level one, just getting started. And then we'll say, well, which date? And so there's different exam dates based on geography. So North America, Asia Pacific, Middle East, so which date and which time zone works for me. Uh, you know, some folks want to take exams at 2 a.m. You might find one that works for you. And so we'll say, uh, we'll do one on the 10-5, and then I'll submit that. But I'm going to say, just so they don't actually believe me here, this is a test. Please ignore. 
I'll submit that. And there we go. At that point, it starts processing on their side. They start scheduling, they reach out to you. That was it. But my sample Bob there just registered for the exam. It was really that easy. I didn't even have to sign into the website. So core, yeah, I, I know other vendors use the terminology core and I, that can be confusing. Core is, stands for the style of the exam, cloud operational readiness evaluations. There's no core plus a specialty, some other specialization. Core is just the style of the exam. All levels are practical labs. Just that's it, just don't complicate. All the levels are practical lab exams. Core is the style that, that's being done here. And it's not a multiple choice question. Good question. Cool, let me make sure I didn't skip over anything here. Uh, oh, and of course, certifications, because we all love certifications, right? <clears throat> I see that question, I'll check here in a second. Uh, we, uh, so for the certification, those are gonna be issued through Credly. And a couple thing, new things here. Uh, some folks like to print their certifications. So instead of mailing out certifications, they're gonna be printed through Credly. So, <clears throat> Let me uh, go back over here. Um, on Credly, like for example, this is my dashboard. You can see you've got the, a couple certifications there. What you'll do is you'll click on it, uh, say like here, AWS Solutions Ar Architect. And under this share button, there'll be an option for printing. Other vendors like AWS and Cisco don't have that option. Um, you can get a printed one mailed to you, uh, but with Arista, it's going to be, you go to Credly, you choose to print it if you want, or if you don't want to print it, you don't have to. The other thing they're doing differently is through Credly, through that same site, they're going to create a searchable Arista directory of all the Arista certified humans, or I should say engineers there, um, where you can't search for individual users. Like if I go to Credly and I type in Andrew Stibberts, just as a general search, nothing's gonna happen. But if you go to Credly, you go to the Arista directory, you can search for, show me everyone who is level one certified, show me everyone who is level two certified and so on. So that way, if someone is verifying, let's say we put some certifications on our resume and someone wants to check is, is Andrew actually level three certified? We go to the directory, Plug in level three, you can see, see my name there. Or if we'll say someone's headhunting, they say, well, I need a level five certified engineer. I need someone who knows Arista, but also knows the automation side of things. Go to Arista, go to Credly, go to the directory, show me everyone who's level five certified. And then they can start you know, trying to send out some emails, try to hire somebody through there. So something new to look forward to on that site. Uh, let me check that question that I got there. Uh, for the cost, you know, I don't know off the top of my head how much that exam costs. Uh, I can find that later and we can send that out. Um, this website was actually like this today is 7 7. For the sake of recording, I'm saying that this website was actually updated yesterday. Uh, it's actually a brand new website, so I have to double check on that. Um, we'll find that information and we'll we'll get that posted. Okay, uh, for Sunset Learning specifically, uh, we do have a, a course discount going on right now. Um, for signing up for training, you can sign up through the SDN Pro site. You can sign up through the Sunset Learning site. This is a promo code for our Sunset Learning site, so. Take advantage of that. We'd love to see you in class. And I think that's it. So that's kind of as a re re uh, refresher there, kind of rehashing. It's not, not too much, but so Arista, yeah, data center networking, seven levels of certification with five, five courses there. And it's really one, two, three, four, five, just in that order. 
Uh, if you wanted to start from the beginning, you can come in at whatever level you or your student is already comfortable with, set up your training. And I, 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 I get no commission on this, <laughs> even though I'm the instructor. The exams are hands-on and they pull from what we actually do in the course. And you get three weeks of lab access. So for succeeding on the certification, on the, on the evaluation, I highly recommend taking the training in order to learn the topic, learn about how it's actually working, but also to get that hands-on practice. And then go schedule the exam and, uh, and pass. All right, so let me stop sharing here. Let me pivot over to the questions. Uh, I see the question there, is additional paid rack access available as an option? So that would be, if I bring up the training here real quick. So that would be, if we go back to the SDN Pro site, that would be something like, doing the Arista Academy basic where it's the lab and the book. Uh, that's a bit pricey just for uh, lab access, depends upon how much you really want. I'm gonna say that it is EOS, uh, EOS, which again has a cloud variant. We can run these on virtual routers. So if anyone wants to spin it up in their own, we'll say in an, in a, in an AWS VPC, and spin up a couple of those. Um, that might be a, a cheaper option than purchasing the, the self-study uh, separately uh, in addition to the training. I'm gonna have to check on lab access extensions. Um, I will have to check on that, I'll make a note of that. Let me check the other question that I had there. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Uh, which level is CCIE equivalent? A slow five. No. Um, so level one, two, three is data center fundamentals. I'll say intermediate, more advanced options. If I had to draw a comparison from Cisco certification levels to the ICE to the to the uh, ACE certifications. Uh, level five would be more like the data center, CCNP data center, plus their automation and program, their, um, what do they call it, the CCNA DevOps sort of course, um, plus the CCNP service provider. That's where the level five is. It would be two different CCNPs, data center and service provider and route, sw and route switch as well, and their DevOps uh, training. I would say CCIE would be closer to the level six or level seven, definitely level six certification. Level seven is the architect, you know, you could type architect, architect, but I would say level six would be closer to the CCIE certification in Cisco. That's, that's the way I look at it. There's no, there's no perfect one-to-one -one mapping, but that's what I think. Well, let me ask you this. So I, I got the next, I see the next question there. Is it a physical book or a PDF? Does, does any technical training do physical books these days? Right, it's all digital. Everybody's going digital. So it's all digital. Uh, we go through, no, that's, that's fair. It's not a PDF, all right? Uh, so it's uh, done through Mimeo. Um, but it's, uh, you can download, download an offline copy. You can view it offline. But everything, everything's digital these days. Yeah. Um, so I see the other question here. Cool. Awesome, David. Thank you. Um, I see the other question here in the Q and A panel <clears throat> about the recertification. Put a pin in that because the recertification process with Arista is undergoing development right now. There's actually a kind of a pause where if anyone gets certified, I believe it was. Let me pull this up before I dig myself into a hole. Let me make sure I'm saying the right things. So right here, let me share my screen out here. <clears throat> so where am I? I'm on the SDN Pro site. Under training, I scroll down the core renewals. 
there's currently a pause where if you get certified uh, between June 1st, 2021, December 31st, 2022, you are exempt from renewal until the end of 2023. They are currently working on updating this. So put a pin in that. Don't worry about that just yet. Um, that's still, still being looked at. Um, but yeah, because nobody, nobody wants to take the exams again in order to just pass the exam where it's a four hour or five hour practical exam. Um, but so they're, they're looking into that. Uh, for the grandfathering, excuse me, they had a, uh, uh, if you were grandfathered in, so you already had a uh, late level two and then the, so when you say, what do you mean by that? When you say grandfathered in, Ah, gotcha. Um, I believe it's going to follow the new renewal process. So whether it's the point system, whether it's taking the exam again, I believe if you're grandfathered in, you're, you're going to follow the same renewal process as everybody else. So whatever, whatever the requirement is to renew level two, that's what you would need to do. I will say, so bear with me. Let's say you take, moving forward, you take the level three exam. At the end of the exam, before you submit your work, what you can do is literally show run, copy and paste the config from all of your devices and save it. And if that config works, it's a passing exam then the next time you take the exam, if it's the same exam, you could literally copy and paste that back into the devices because it's a passing exam and you already know the knowledge, you already proved you know the knowledge. So obviously exams change over time, the course and the exam might update before we take the exam again, but if you're recertifying before the course, uh, before the exam updates, if you already have your work, if you've already done it once, why reinvent the wheel? Just use the work you've already done. Can't do that on a multiple choice question exam. Cool. Um, I think that's all the question. Um, is the the level is the level naming schemes finalized? As far as I know, like level one, two, three, four, and five, six, seven, six, and seven. Um, yeah, <clears throat> I haven't heard anything. Uh, I have. As far as I know, level one through seven is pretty much what they're working with. I have I don't see that word get used, that journeyman get used that often. Let me share my screen out so folks know what we're talking about. When you look at the Arista site, if you, you zoom in here a little bit, <clears throat> if you look at level one, they call it a cloud novice, level two cloud associate, level three cloud journeyman, and then professional, then automation, architect, and then expert. So those words, eh, they don't come up as often. It's more just the level of the training. Um, and, but yes, I, I agree. <laughs> the word journeyman is a little subjective. Um, you might call that more of a, the level three, more of a professional level exam. Um, I haven't heard anything. I don't know if they're going to change the names there. <laughs> gotcha. I will say I, I have gone through these exams and they're a lot of fun. I've done dozens, dozens of Cisco exams. And this was the most fun I've had in a while, actually sitting there doing, doing the work. And I came out of the exam knowing that, yeah, I, I actually did it. It took four hours. I actually did it. And if I walk into a live data center or remotely accessed a live data center, I could do the exact same thing. Um, it's, you definitely have a lot more confidence coming out of this kind of exam than just answering a bunch of multiple choice questions. And um, some vendors in their, I'm just not saying which ones, in their latest rounds of exams, they don't even have simulation questions anymore. It is only multiple choice questions on some of their exams. So this, the core style of actually being practical is, um, it's awesome. 
for actually testing your skills, not just did you memorize part of the book. Cool. <clears throat> well, thank you all for attending. Um, just real quick, there's no survey. Don't worry, I'm not gonna ask you to do a survey or anything. Um, just, I'm just gonna throw this up on the wall here one more time. Don't forget about the promo. You know, saving money is always good these days. So hopefully we'll see you in class. Hopefully this has been informational. Um, if you have any other uh, questions for other tech talks, if there's something you're interested in, something you'd like us to do some research and present on from a from an instructor, from an engineer perspective, please feel free to reach out, ask us, you know, to do a tech talk on something you're interested in. Um, but if not, hopefully we'll see you in class. All right, everyone have, hope everyone has a good day. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification icon to get notified whenever we upload new content.